pretty well understood. I'm not sure that it needs to be incentivized, whereas uh, the next step in water conservation and a significant demonstration of that, I think, is more in keeping with uh, our forward thinking, and that's why I would prefer we move with this program. It looks like the second program could be in the Cheetah Slow proposals for uh, next year, and the budget subcommittee will hear that. Any other comments from the council? I just wanted to comment that, that I believe that the reason why this item came forward at this time was in partially in response to our fractional falling short of um, our our state mandated goal, and, um, and that was we're we're responding to make sure that we stay in compliance with state directives by educating the public um, and moving forward with. <coughs> reducing water consumption. So can you ask the water budget is doing well? Are we continuing to increase rates? Um, is that doing well? Do we need to increase rates more? What is the position of the water department's funding and budget? This is our last year of the four year water rate. This is our last year of the four years of water rate increase, and as far as I know, the activity currently we have, the water fund is stabilized. So will additional increases be necessary? I'm not sure that's been evaluated. We cannot answer we, that tonight, but our hope is that the answer will be no. So off the hope that we don't have to raise water rates, we're going to fund additional water expenditures. We have money now for such items that promote uh, conservation and help us meet our state uh, mandated goals, so we have money for that now. Um, the intent of the increases in the water fund were to make sure that we are self-sustaining with infrastructure requirements and those kinds of needs going forward. So the finance director was basically telling us, yes, our account is Stay, our fund is stable at this point, so we are able to meet our continuing infrastructure needs. We do have ample money for conservation as well. Thank you. I have a last question just as to the process, because uh, our folks from Daily Acts explained that there's a significant amount of work to find a site and evaluate the choices, and it seems to me um, that would be something, if we're looking for a public site, that staff is going to have to assist with. And I'm, I'm curious if that would be a, a point of decision making in the near future for the council, if it were going to be one building, city building, or a different city building, or a different one. What I might recommend in that regard is that the council could delegate decision making on that to the Water Committee. So we will talk with Daily Acts and then potentially have a meeting with the Water Committee to set the spot might be idea. Okay. Is the council comfortable with that suggestion? Is the assumption that the, that we're moving forward with the public site, is that part of the motion? I, I don't think I said that. Did I say that, Mary? I did intend that, though, because of our conversation. So I would amend my motion to uh, have this involve a public site. Thank you. If we amended it, to be a public site, then we also have to amend the budget to allow for funding to pay for the additional materials that will be needed to be provided to the project. Well, there's I don't think we know that yet, and I think that's part of the evaluation that the subcommittee needs to do with the recommended sites. So if, if this comes in as just impossibly expensive or something, you will hear back from the water subcommittee, since $4,500 or less is already of concerns right away. Mm -hmm. that, so let's see, I don't know who was the second. You, you were the second. Is that okay with you that we amended to be a public site? Alrighty. Any other discussion? Seeing none, then I'll call for the vote. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? That will carry. And thank you for coming and being here. It's good to have people who can answer our questions. Okay. Thanks again. Thank you for the opportunity.
So let me just check with the council. We're moving into uh, the discussion item number seven, and this is the mid-year budget adjustments. This is potentially a longer item. Do you guys need a quick break right now? Okay, so let's come reconvene at 7.15 and get into this thing.
Okay, everybody, let's read the main hours. It's about 7.20, and we'll move on to item number 7, if I can have everyone's attention. This is a discussion and consideration of, the long one, of adoption of resolution approving the mid-year budget adjustments to our 15-16 fiscal year budget and acceptance of quarterly financial informational reports. And we have Anna, our financial uh, director, here to report. And so I think the city... Oh, make a brief introduction. introduction. Intro, okay. Just to set the stage a little bit while I was getting the final preparation. Um, of course, we can bring back, uh, each year we do a routine item that's our mid-year budget adjustments where we do quite a number of relatively small changes to the budget that have occurred since the adoption of the budget the previous summer. But this year is a bit different and there's a lot more information involved because in last year's uh, budget adoption time in last June and June of 2015, there were a number of items which we were unable to fund at that time, which the City Council directed be returned to the Council in the year budget review in the hopes that revenues would be up or and or expenses would be down and or needs might have changed so that potentially some of those items which could not be funded last summer might now be able to be funded. So along with a lot of routine items this evening, we are bringing a number of items of that type back to you. Some of the items which were directed for us, we were directed to bring back from last June, and some other items which have come up or changed since then, which will be addressed in the course of the hearing. The format is somewhat the same as what you were used to from last year's budget adoption. That is to say, we distill down these items into what we call the needs assessment list. That's the primarily what you're going to see the list that was developed last June, but with the items that we were directed to bring back and some new items, color-coded and ready to be explained by our finance director for your consideration this evening. The good news is that in an overall sense, our revenues are up somewhat and our expenses are down somewhat, so there will be an opportunity to fund some of these things this evening as you'll hear. The only other final comment I might make by way of introduction here is that the budget subcommittee did meet, that being Vice Mayor Glass and Council Member Robert Jacob met and discussed and reviewed these items so they have some additional information that you don't have until it's presented to you. Uh, the budget committee did not uh, choose to make specific recommendations on these items, but they did review them and they are informed about them. So in the course of this evening's discussion about that, they may wish to contribute their thoughts having previously addressed these items. So with that, unless there's any questions of me about those, that kind of an overview, I would turn it over to the finance director who would so any questions for the city manager at this time? Maybe we can hold those and put them all together. So I want to uh, go ahead. It looks like we're ready. Okay, if you are. Good evening, Mayor Gurney, and thank you, City Manager McLaughlin. Um, the item before you tonight contains two components. The first is the informational item only for council to approve, uh, to accept 
quarterly financial report. And with that, I'll go into the PowerPoint presentation. Okay, does any, can everyone see up here? Does anyone need to move? To okay, yeah, I just want to make sure they, we can all follow you as we go. Okay. All right. Um, so the finance department has completed the second quarter of the fiscal year 15-16. Um, the staff report summarized the activity of the city general fund, enterprise funds, and all other special revenue funds in relation to the city budget which the City Council adopted on June 30th of 2015. The, this update is only intended to provide an accounting summary that gives an overall financial position at the end of the second quarter. This slide, the quarter two general fund overview, shows the actual collection through the end of December 31st of 2015 was 3.39 3 million in revenue, expenditures at 3.68, our sales tax, transit occupancy tax, and utility uses tax continue to make up of the 57% of Sebastopol general fund revenue collection in the second quarter. Overall, our major revenue are performing at the projected or better level. All departments are trending either at 50% or under. You will notice on this slide, the building department is slightly under the 50% because of the unplanned consultant services. Building has requested for an increase in that category for the budget adjustment, which we will talk shortly after this. Um, also, community center has 42.5% remaining in the budget. This is due to the remodeling that was already expended through December and other expenses will eventually even out by year end. If I could here, council members, this, this is intended to give you a snapshot at the end of the second quarter, which is a routine informational item and the, what the uh, finance department attempts to do with this is to make sure things are tracking as expected. Not all our revenues and expenses come in evenly throughout the year. Therefore, they don't always neatly fall into the half a year has gone by, so it should be a 50% category. But as the finance director is telling you, basically, these items are all performing normally. In this slide, um, our enterprise funds operating are tracking normally and for both revenue and expenditures, as well as the capital improvement program. General fund gas tax fund revenue are on target, as you can see in the financial update, for revenue is on target, but for expenditure, it's a little bit over the 50% mark. It's due to some internal miscoding on the utility expenses, which has been corrected um, in January. All other special revenue funds, such as permit technology, incremental, and art in lieu's are well below budget, which are on the list for this new budget adjustment recommendation as well. Um, in summary, the city general fund continued to perform well with the overall positive indicators. Each department continued to be responsible and accountable for their budget. And that concluded my quarter two financial report. Council have any questions? Are there any questions for Anna? It looks like Council Member Jacob will start. I heard earlier about the hotel demand, and then you talked about the TOT being a significant source. And then the budget subcommittee, I recall, you talked about it actually performing better than expected. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you know at what percent the TOT is performing at better than expected? I don't think we have that on the floor. So the entire budget for TLT is $320,000 uh, so far through December, uh, and that's not including December 1st yet because this is on a cash basis. We at 206. So that's only halfway through the year. Uh, that's not halfway through the year. That is through November. So, so we still have about seven months. 
So is that because is that because there's a higher use of our intelligence? Mm -hmm. Yes. That's do we have travel information, or do we have statistics on like the occupancy rates of our temporary? Well, I recently last month I recently attended a um, finance luncheon, and Ben Stone was a speaker at that luncheon, and he said that all of the uh, Sonoma County city have seen significant increase, and the occupancy rate was about seventy six percent. Huh? And do you know what it was before? Uh, roughly 68. Thank you. Any other questions for this part of the report? I'm looking at our spreadsheet person. <laughs> I think we're good right now. Right now. Okay, so let's let's move on to the meat and potatoes of today's agenda. So let's start out with the general fund overview. The projected revenue has increased about 0.3% or approximately $23,000. The proposed expenditure is down by 0.4 or approximately $32,000. Transfer out is proposed to increase by $50,000. The transfer is what we made annually in June of $150,000 to Street Payment Reserve Fund. This is a proposal to partially transfer $50,000 today and address the remainder of $100,000 closer to June. The bottom line, net budgetary result increased by approximately $5,000 from the adopted to the adjusted. In other words, council has $68,000 surplus projected at June 30th of 2016, and that is the circle red item right there. Let's break down the general fund starting with each of the revenue components. From the top, if we combine the property tax revenue projected to decrease by 2%, the, de the decrease is attributed to the recalculation of the ending of the triple flip. The next one is our sales and use tax also see a decrease of 1.7 based on the current data we receive from the sales tax consultant community services. One piece of good news that I mentioned in my quarterly update is our transient occupancy tax. We continue to see a strong growth in the collection um, in that area. So all the city, as I mentioned at that luncheon meeting, uh, they've seen about 76% of occupancy tax compared to, on average, 68. In the governmental revenue also increase, the in, this increase is a one-time increase that is due to the state paying the city of all the uh, mandated costs that went back to 1999. So this is just a one-time increase that we're seeing here. Charges for service unfortunately experienced a decrease because of reduction in staff time charged back. Engineering was projected to decrease from $80,000 to 25. Uh, public work decreased from 20 to 10 due to less inspection and less plan check work orders. And planning is decreased from 40,000 to 31,000 due to timing of some of the pending projects. So the bottom line, revenue is projected to increase by a third of 1%, or about $23,000. The 
This is our general fund expenditures, and I'll go through any variances that's $500 and above. Um, let's start with the council budget show reduction in about uh, almost $1,200 is due to an amount that was inadvertently budgeted for retiree medical costs. Um, building has seen an unanticipated increase in permitting activity this year, which resulted in an increase in the use of consultant services. Um, police department is proposing a variety of budget adjustment, postponing a replacement of a, a vehicle, raise the floor in the dispatcher center replacement before um, the 911 project is completed, um, increase in salary line <coughs> items as well as decrease in other smaller categories such as vehicle maintenance, equipment, supply, fingerprinting, fees, etc. result in an overall of the budget saving of about $12,580. Public Works, which includes the engineering division, is proposing a decrease in city engineering costs due to majority of the city engineering time being directly charged to Pacific projects. Also proposing an increase to prepare the crosswalk light of $20,000, which I have discussed this in um, quarter one update as well. Uh, plus a decrease in less than anticipated work needed for the tree and the park division result in an overall net budget saving of $4,000. Community services function has an overall budget reduction of $17,100. Um, the pool apparatus estimated repair was $3,000 less than originally estimated. Additionally, the replacement of the chlorine generator uh, to the pool was canceled and postponed to next year, and that was uh, 14100 Additionally, Sebastopol Community and Culture Center purchased a new flooring for the main hall, and the SCC received a $10,000 in upfront funding loan from a private owner. The loan, the loan needed to repay back to the private owner, therefore the center is requesting the $10,000 that is currently allocated for the kitchen remodel to reallocate it to fund this flooring purchase. Last but not least, although it's not showing on this slide, but it was explained in the staff report that the annual before June 30th staff would obtain authorization to transfer $150,000 uh, from the special sales tax fund to the street payment reserve. The budget subcommittee has recommended that we transfer $50,000 now and return in June to transfer the balance of 100. Overall, expenditure is proposed to decrease by 0.4%, almost $32,000. This is page one of two of the need assessment, uh, the Department of Need Assessment. Do you have a question? Anna, would you prefer questions as we go or at the end? We, we can do that. It's more, it's, I think it's better that way for better discussion. Okay, well, while we go? Because mm -hmm. we've got one right here. Last year, class. I'm, um, I'm not remembering the $50,000 transfer, and why were we doing that? Um, normally, we would wait until June, and for efficiency, if there is fund balance, we, we talk about this in the budget subcommittee, that let's transfer 50 now and come back to council later on for the remaining balance. It's just traditional that we each year try to transfer at least $100,000 or $150,000 to the street reserve so we continue to try our very best to keep our streets in good repair. In a conservative approach since we've gone through such an intensive analysis here at mid-year, the finance director was recommending that we transfer some of those funds now. Normally, you, they would be transferred as one large transfer at the time of regular budget adoption in June. So the council could wait till June, theoretically use the money now, 
or it could take a more conservative approach and make part of the transfer at least at this point in time, and that's what the finance director is recommending. And, and we're transferring from? From the Which additional I... surplus of revenues over expenses. Yes. And we transfer that from the, the two sales tax measure, which is the special sales tax fund. Oh, okay, so it's going from the special sales tax fund. Yes. Into the, okay, got it. Yes. Thank you. And, and I believe I recall that the finance department actually made a suggestion to the budget subcommittee of $100,000, mm -hmm. and the budget subcommittee brought that back to $50,000 because we knew there were specific items uh, in June that we were looking forward to funding. So we wanted to, and so we wanted to make sure that there is money left. That, but not theoretically. Actually, the council could choose to pull that fifty thousand dollars back in today to fund projects and wait to fund the full hundred fifty thousand dollars when we do the June budget. So I just want to verify that we have that there's sixty eight thousand two hundred thirteen dollars available as a surplus. Um, after you deduct the fifty thousand. After the deduction of the fifty thousand, if council decided that we don't want to make that transfer today, then that will go back up to one hundred and eight. One hundred eighteen two one three. Yes. So I just want to ask another question. That doesn't include any money set aside for the reserve, right? Uh, no. Uh, all of this planning that we're talking about. So while we are advancing monies to the street reserve, I'm going to call it, we're not similarly advancing monies to the general reserve. No, we're not. So what you have left, if you decided to do nothing today and leave the 68000 as is, that will be added to the reserves. Mm -hmm. So this is the page one of two of the departmental needs assessment list. Um, highlighted in the orange are the requests that to bring back from the June 30th budget adoption session. Um, items that's highlighted in green are new and added by staff to requests for a budget adjustment. So let me start with um, finance department request an additional position. As I have details in my justification in the separate memo along with the staff report, finance has experienced a short staffing for an extended period of time. There has been no cost training, no staff development, or any succession planning. I've been assuming lower level tasks, which prevent me from completing higher level financial analysis. It's also limited the entire department time to attend necessary seminar to keep current, especially in the HR area where rules and regulation are constantly changing. This proposal is to request one full-time equivalent position in the finance department, and this is a journey level position. The person main focus will be providing customer service at the front counter and other administrative duties as assigned. In addition, this would relieve both junior accountants for lower level operation that could be shifted to this new position. The proposed change to add one FTE will create a smoother flow of operation and facilitate cost training between the two junior accountants for succession planning and development of all staff. It would also allow more time for me to attend quarterly and annually meeting, conferences, and training offsite. The next three. If I could just elaborate, just elaborate on that for a second or two. What the finance director is saying is that we're attempting to bring HR functions back into the administrative services department as they have been previously. At the present time, the finance director is doing so many lower level tasks due to understaffing that that's not possible. As well, I'm attending the REMF conferences and other items that relate to HR uh, and doing that myself. So across the two departments, um, the feeling is that with an additional full-time employee in finance, things will start getting put in their proper order, so to speak, 
with um, finance undertaking more of the HR function. So I'm wondering, is that slide in our packet somewhere? That particular slide? Yes. Can you tell me what page it's on? I'm having trouble finding things in the talk. Right. Right. It's, it's page seven. seven. Start out on page seven of 38. Okay, I got it. Yeah, I saw that. I just didn't see the small type. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I had a quick question about that. Yes. Uh, the number shown, the 41,600, does that include all uh, cost of all uh, employee benefits associated with that position? The, the original requested amount? Well, uh, yeah, under requested amount. Well, originally, when we were in the June budget discussion, uh, that was just to fund a part-time uh, consultant services. But I should also point out that if the council commits at this time to getting an additional full-time employee in the finance department, that's also a commitment to bring back that same item as a budget item in the 16-17 budget in June, because this, is, this represents just the amount of money it would take to fund that position from now through June 30th. It would take you months to hire Yes, that's awesome. <laughs> Okay, let's see, we'll do um, unit and packet. Some more questions. Okay, here. more questions. Yeah. Um, can we get those little LED reading ones? <laughs> oh, yes. Just one. Um, um, one minute. Thank you for being on my One last. One last. Okay. One, one there is the door off. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, is this item the same one as is discussed on page 12, where if we talk about option one, option two, and option three. Yes. Thank you. I can follow this. Um, uh, so, so although the, we're seeing a specific number here, that number is somewhat fluid depending on whether we go with option one, two, or three. Yes. The, the number you see on this need assessment, like the city manager has mentioned, is to carry us through June of this year using temporary staffing help. Okay, but so so in other words, we're kind of on option three, temporary staffing help. Is that option three? Um, no, we no. we probably we are on option one. The proposal is we on option one. Okay. With the like, council member Jacob mentioned that it's going to take a. a while to bring staff on board, right. um, we would just tap temporary services to bring someone on board in a couple weeks and try it out as temporary to hire. Okay. Because okay. that would be the approach that I would take. Okay, but we're looking at um, the level of person as being an option one person versus an option two person. Yes. Okay, got it. Thank you. Okay, Council Member Slater has a question for you. Yes. On that same topic, the the descriptions for um, office assistant and account clerk one are identical, but the salaries are not. So I assume that the account clerk one is a more skilled person that could be perceived as having um, more knowledge in finance and. Could be perceived as having more knowledge and be able to train on the utility billing and be able to help out. When I say utility billing, it's helping out with um, inputting the meter reads into the system. Um, the office assistant would just be uh, taking care of the customer, per se, and then there's other admin duties as a sign. All right. So, the, so, Currently, we have two junior accountants, which are skill-wise above the industry standard account clerk. Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, that's fine for everything. Okay. Any other questions at this time? 
We'll have more as we go, I think. So, so just to verify, the 41,600 number that's on the budget subcommittee worksheet list, that's the amount that would come out of the general fund? Uh, it's only 25% of that will come out of the general fund. So, because the rest of the money will come out of the water and sewer funds? Yeah, yes. So, the amount that you affect the surplus that we're dealing with, the surplus, is only general fund surplus. We're yes. Not, so, the amount that this actually affects is the general fund and the one hundred eighteen thousand two hundred thirteen dollars surplus minus fifty thousand yes is less than this twenty thousand one fifty that's so correct could an accurate number would probably help us in our deliberations this evening the accurate number would be about five thousand dollars five thousand five thousand and then for the full year it would be ten thousand. For the full year, if we're looking at sixty thousand dollars, twenty-five percent of that would be fifteen. Fifteen. So five thousand for the partial year and fifteen thousand for next year for the general fund. That's correct. That's it. right. Assuming the temporary goes to permanent hire, assuming we to pick that, option one. Yes, that's assuming. Okay. Keep going and we'll pause for questions. And the next three items for the um, traffic signal sign request for $15,000, <coughs> local street engineering design for fifty, and the 10% local match um, that staff would apply for another MTC grant, these items could potentially be funded by traffic impact fee fund. And this slide is page two of the departmental needs assessment. New items on this page are the feasibility study class one east-west trail study. Community center of the $10,000 earmark for the kitchen upgrade, which I mentioned in a few slides earlier, uh, to be reallocated to fund the flooring upgrade. Next on this list is the Pine Grove Square projects. During the 1516 budget, the propose of the half-time economic development position was discussed. Due to the budget, due to the budgetary constraint, the half-time position was not funded. Between the time, between that time and now, the priority has shifted. Therefore, a request to use what would have been the earmark for the economic development position be reallocated to fund the contractor services for the Pine Grove Square projects. As part of your packet this evening, <coughs> excuse me, the council has a memo from the Pine Grove Committee explaining this. And in short version, that there is somewhat of an overlap between the proposed uh, uh, retention of a consultant to do the Pine Grove Square project, which, by the way, if approved this evening, would return to you in a couple of weeks as its own agenda item with contract and a fuller explanation, but is to, to commence the development of the city parking lot area known as Pine Grove Square and use of a consultant to package it for potential development and potential relocation of City Hall to a new city center to be provided at that location. And in the course of the Pine Grove Committee uh, discussions about this, with the cons proposed consultant, it was realized by the committee that some of the tasks that would be undertaken by the consultant were some of the very same tasks that an economic development coordinator person <coughs> would perform early on in the hiring of that particular person. So that's why the Pine Grove Square Committee is recommending to the full council that in lieu of doing an economic development coordinator this year, instead, the Pine Grove project can certainly be funded. The worst case scenario with that is we would get some of the same services that were proposed to be done through economic development. Then the council could look at economic development in the next fiscal year. So I want to check this is put in on the chart as a $60,000 item, but I believe the services would bridge two fiscal years and be I mean, a quarter to half that. For That's this right. Month. It was proposed that the consultant services would commence excuse me, on January 1. The earliest they can now commence, if approved, would be March 1. 
so the delay of three months in the commencement of that work would take those services through into the next fiscal year. We were not able, however, to break it out specifically to know exactly how much would be funded this year and how much would be able to be funded next year at the same time. On the other side of that coin, though, we do have the ability to work with a consultant and structure it in such a manner that whatever the council directs, we would be able to achieve. So the council on this side could direct a certain expenditure up to a certain amount, and we would make sure that that's what it arrived at. This is clear. So the last item on this list is the $50,000 transfer to the street payment reserve funds and the balance of 100 the staff will return to council for approval when we get closer to June. So on to the water fund revenue, uh, water fund slide, excuse me. Um, the water fund revenue is on target and there's no adjustment is needed here. Um, expenditures increase, decrease are due to the cost allocation from each of the respective departments. Water operation is requesting a 5,000 increase that was for the um, stuffing machine lease um, amount that was more than originally has anticipated. This is the sewer fund slide and same as water. Revenue is on target here as well and no adjustment is proposing. Um, sewer operation is requesting an additional $20,000 for sewer main and manhole work due to a popular inquiry from the customer. The rebate program is recommended to be extended and increased from $1,000 to $5,000. This slide is various adjustment recommended to special revenue funds based on a combination of year-to-date collection and historical revenue data as well as an approximate revenue from several known development projects that could potentially obtain building permit this fiscal year. On the expenditure side, Building Fund is requesting a $4,000 increase in contractor services for staff training and development. And that concluded my mid-year budget adjustment and if Council any have, have any questions for me. Okay, let's see if we have questions now, uh, and then perhaps we can move to public comment and bring this back to the council again for further discussion. So, are there more questions right now? Do you have some? Okay, council member Slavery. On the budget subcommittee worksheet, the big one. Mm -hmm. Line item seven and eight. Eight is so the discussion is that that was the potentially shared employee between city clerk, city manager, and finance departments six months ago. Yes, that's item number eight, yes. And so that I understand this request for the position, that position is proposed to essentially disappear from this. Is that accurate or is that still a request? That is accurate. It's, it's still a request that we wish we could have met, but are not proposing right now to do it this particular fiscal year. This is a tricky item in the sense that the finance director indicated there's a need in the finance department for some fairly high level employee work that will help the overall operation of the finance department. A full time person who would help the three departments would be much more difficult to find. The type of assistance that would be of a, the type of person that would be of assistance, for example, to the city clerk would be someone above the level of simply answering telephones and directing calls. It would have to be a person that's quite skilled and able to do things at a much higher level. That's a lot more expensive person. <coughs> so the request right now of staff on this item 
is that in lieu of funding a person who would assist all three departments, instead we fund the beginning of a person coming on board to assist just in finance. Okay, so the discussion earlier, it, it sounds like a lot of the HR functions will be moving back to the finance department off of your desk. That is the overall intent. That hasn't happened yet. But uh, the finance director has... Well, should the, the additional finance position be funded, then, then it starts to... If everything works right and we have no more staff turnover and, and people stay and learn the job and, and so forth and all these things happen as we hope they would, then yes, that will be... That is our goal. Okay, so we this... return the function of the finance department to an administrative services department as it had been. Right. So that does have the effect of helping the city manager department? Yes. Okay. Ultimately. All right. So then item number 11, the digital traffic signals, the radar signals, signs, that's the, the, that's the Bodega Avenue location, is it not? Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, line item 14, MTC grant, and this is our 10% local match. Is this the State Highway uh, Bicycle Lane project? Is this the set aside for that potential? Yes, it is. Okay. Line item 22. Feasibility study for Class 1 trails east-west, and on the worksheet it's listed at $100,000. On page 22, in a sub-note somewhere, D, multi-use trail feasibility study, $80,000. There was a range given in this estimate previously by the planning director. It, we're not real sure of what that figure would be, but it was proposed to be likely in the range of eighty to one hundred thousand dollars. Okay, so you got both. You're not approving it this evening by, for example, budgeting. Budgeting. Right. Yeah. Understood. Okay, those are my questions. So we're not approving something even if we put it in the budget. That's what you just said. That's right. You're budgeting for it. You can direct staff, for example, the Pine Grove. Square item, as I alluded to, if it's budgeted for this evening, then we intend in two weeks to bring that contract back as an agenda item. Right, and that one's in at sixty thousand, when in fact it might be half of thirty-two or something. We don't know. Right. Okay. We can set a limit and tell the consultant this is how much we have this fiscal year. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And she so will adjust her tasks accordingly. Are there questions? More questions before we go to public comment? Um, I have some questions about page 23 of the staff report. So estimated CIP expenditures. So, um, so it's what this report is telling us is that we basically have a fund balance of 965,000. Is that what it's saying? Okay. Yes, as as of July 1st of 2015. Yes. Okay. Right. And then, so then you're um, showing pro projected revenue. Um, so we would have a, an additional projected revenue of 324000 over the next several years up until the 1920 fiscal year. That's correct. Right. So then we have some new fund balance. Then I... Um, and under 1516, we have this list of different expenditures. So these are um, these aren't approved budget items. These are just proposed budget.